it ends up our service and operations in Australia. Um, and I'm here today to talk about uh, not only our new products that we've got coming out to the market that we're excited about, but also a little bit about the company history of Goodweek, uh, who we are as a global organisation, uh, who we are in Australia, and, uh, and our local service and support that we can offer as well. So, Goodweek was founded in 2008 by Mr. Daniel Wong. Daniel's the CEO of our company. He's still really actively involved in the business. And effectively, he founded the business on three principles, which was reliability, integrity, and credibility. And every new product we bring out is basically representative of those three core values. We've got just on a thousand employees globally at Goodweek, uh, over 200 currently in R&D. Um, where we're looking to expand that. So within the next 12 months, we want to double the amount of people we've got in R&D. We are rapidly expanding globally, uh, especially. So currently, I think we've got about 11 subsidiaries throughout the world. Uh, and our, our simple objective is to um, develop, I suppose, innovative products, but also tailor those products to the specific market. So every single product that we bring out to Australia is tailored for the Australian market. Uh, we get to choose exactly what goes in those products, um, the specs. If there's anything, um, if there's any Goodweek products that you're using at the moment and you notice, look, we don't quite think those specs meet the market demand, uh, please let us know. We always value the feedback. And as I said, we do get to uh, design the inverters for the Australian market. Uh, we've got three R&D centers at the moment. We've got two major manufacturing plants. One of those is in uh, Suzhou, China. Uh, which is our head office, and the other one is in Guangdu, China, which is where 80% of our volume actually gets manufactured. And, um, and I suppose the popular topic at the moment is uh, the coronavirus and how that's impacting all the manufacturers and the uh, global supply chain. So for every single Chinese manufacturer, it will have some sort of impact. Um, for us, the impact is not necessarily on our production capacity. Um, we're a little bit lucky in that uh, the city where most of our products get manufactured, which is Guangdu, um, that city was basically unaffected. And straight after Chinese New Year, those guys were back and our capacity was at 100% there. However, our other production facility in Suzhou, um, in the Jiangsu province, was affected. And, um, and there was probably a period of two weeks there, two or three weeks, where um, there was little to no production happening. We were lucky that we had um, a fairly large quantity of stock in our local warehouse. So it didn't affect us that much as such. However, what it does, what it does do is it's a flow on effect, even sourcing componentry, um, transportation, freight, all those sorts of things are impacted a little bit. Um, so, so far we haven't really felt the impact, but, um, but it's not to say that, that there's been no impact or there won't be in the future. So this is our global presence. Uh, head office obviously in China, the Australian subsidiary was set up here in 2012 and we've got a Melbourne office. Um, we've, got, we've also got our presence in Queensland, uh, Sydney, Melbourne, and by the end of the year, we also look to uh, appoint, um, appoint people in also Perth and South Australia working for us. We've got uh, a large office in Brazil, also Turkey, um, whereby I suppose 60% of the large scale inverters that we sell goes into the Turkey market. And, um, and we're just about to set up the US and also Japan as major markets as well. Uh, in Australia, I suppose most people probably know Goodweek as selling residential inverters. Um, however, we, we do sell a lot of storage inverters and, and probably the last 18 months we've had a really big focus on the commercial sector as well. These are just some of the awards that we've won, won recently. Uh, the one on the left isn't an award. That was an independent test company that came into our manufacturing testing facilities and the idea of that was that by the time they left, hopefully they would give us the stamp of approval that all of our string inverters are manufactured to last longer than 10 years. Uh, and we we're lucky enough that that happened. And on the back of that, uh, we then re-released uh, some of our warranties. So we basically cut the price of our extended warranties in half, because uh, obviously we're really confident that the product's gonna last longer than 10 years. And then also some of our products, we released uh, a five plus five year warranty. And originally it was just five years across the board. And a lot of the new products you'll see come out to the market will have uh, warranties longer than five years as well. The next one there is the TUV Rhineland Awards. These uh, are prestigious awards for inverter manufacturers. 
and um, and we're lucky that we're the only inverter manufacturer that's won a TV Rhineland Award the last four consecutive years, uh, which is a really good effort. The third one there was an award that we were recently given by EUPD Research uh, as a top brand of PV inverter into the Australian market. Um, we were lucky enough to also win that uh, in 2019 as well. And, uh, and I had the chance to sit down with um, some gentlemen from this company and, and ask them what criteria they went by. And, uh, and so it was basically market share, brand awareness, in which case both of those, uh, Fronius um, had the most last year, uh, and also service and support and quality. And when they coupled those four together, um, we were lucky enough to come in on top, which was, I suppose, a really big honor for ourselves. And then lastly, the Red Dot Design Award, which is given to one inverter per year. Um, for its design and topology effectively. And, uh, and in 2018, we won that award for a product that we're just about to release to the Australian market this year. So these are some of the, these are some of the um, TUV Rhineland awards that we won. We can see there that on the right hand side in 2015, our ES series, which is our hybrid inverter, won the award. Then in 2016, the DNS, which is our resi inverter, the MT series, which is our commercial inverter. <coughs> Then in 2017, our AC coupled storage solution won it. And in 2018, our three phase hybrid, which is ET, and the DSS, which is that resi product we haven't brought out to the market yet. Uh, this slide just shows that, uh, as I said before, in Australia, we're probably more known for selling residential inverters, but globally, we actually sell a lot more commercial inverters. And, uh, and a couple of months ago, we moved into that, uh, the fourth largest manufacturer commercially and we're sitting around the sixth largest manufacturer residentially at the moment. This gives you a bit of a snapshot of our product portfolio we've got at the moment. So you can see there in the single phase, single FPPT, we call that the NS series. We've got a 1.5, a two kilowatt, 2.5 and a three kilowatt. We then move to the dual tracker uh, single phase product, which is called the DNS. We've got a three kilowatt, 4.2 and five kilowatt. And that's the product that has the five plus five year warranty with it at the moment. We then move to the next product, which is one we're really excited to bring out to the market. Um, it's the MS series, which is a large single phase product. So we'll have that, and that comes in three MPTs. So that'll be a five kilowatt, a six, a seven, an 8.5, a nine, and a 10. Uh, it's already been certified and CC listed, and we'll have that out in the market within two weeks. So we're really excited about that product. Talk, talk a little bit more about that later. We then move to our three phase products. We've got, which is our SDT series, dual tracker. We've got a four, a five, a six, a 10, a 15. Uh, we then move to the DT series, which is um, just a little bit larger, also dual tracker. We've got a 20 and a 25. And then the next product that we're gonna bring out to the market is a commercial product called SMT, which has got three MPTs, and that'll come in a 25 kilowatt, 29.99 and 36. And certainly we envisage that 29.99 um, being really popular. Our partners and our distributors already placed really good orders for that. So we're excited by that product. And then lastly, we've got the MT series, which is our large commercial range. We've got a 50 and a 60 already in the market. And we're just about to release the 80 kilowatt, which has got four MPVTs and 16 inputs. Uh, and we've got that product on display down the back there. We can show you later as well. That one there, it's actually a 70. So the one we've got out the back there is a 70. Um, we've, we've also got the 70 listed as well, um, but the one that will probably be more popular is the 80 that we're gonna bring out. Yeah. I looked at the one there, it's Yeah, so we're, we're bringing out a 100 kilowatt product later in the year. We're also, we're also gonna bring out 150 and then, uh, and then at the end of the year, we have 250 as well. Um, so, so far, all of the commercial products we've got are basically for um, uh, the commercial projects or, or let's say large scale under five megawatts. And that 250 kilowatt product will bring out, what's supposed to be the first 1500 volt product we have, giving us access to that large scale market. Um, so we've just broken the residential solutions down into a few key selling points. I suppose, uh, first and foremost, with all of our string inverter products, we've got an LCD screen. And um, the reason we've got an LCD screen is simply because the feedback from the market is they want us to keep the screen. We know that quite a few manufacturers are starting to move away from the screen and, uh, and they're doing so because they're saying that 
it increases the reliability of the inverter by um, removing one exposed component that can potentially fail. And um, and that, that is true. Um, so for us, we we know what our failure rate is in the country. It's really low. Mike sends me a report uh, every week and every month. I get a report saying that how many failures come through, and it includes screen failures. And um, and, and we know the number is really quite low. So for us, it wasn't a matter of um, whether whether it's going to be so many failures. It was more of a uh, whether the market wants it. And so far, the installers are telling us that they want us to keep the screen. So we do that. Um, and then for the commercial inverters, we also give um, give the installers the option of whether they want the screen or whether they don't want the screen. It's simply up to you. Um, and just going back to what I said before, all the products we bring to the Australian market are tailored for the Australian market. It's true, even some of our subsidiaries overseas, um, they've chose to remove the screen out of the inverter. And each of the each of the countries around the world, they get full autonomy. They get to choose exactly what goes in their product. Next is our communication. So we've got uh, Wi-Fi as standard built into all of our inverters. And we've also got RS-485. And we've got the option for LAN or Ethernet. Uh, and right now we've got we've got in development a dongle that's uh, being developed at the moment that has both Wi-Fi and uh, LAN built into the one dongle. Next is the maximum oversizing capability. So for every one of our string inverters, you can oversize it by 33%. Uh, we say that because that's what the, the regulation is. However, if the inverter manufacturer doesn't allow you to do that, then it potentially voids the warranty. But we certainly allow you to do that with all our products. In fact, most of them are manufactured to be oversized by 50%. Um, even a couple of the new ones we're bringing out uh, are manufactured to be oversized by 100% if the installer wants. However, uh, because of the regulations at the moment, 33 is the maximum you can oversize by. Uh, next is the remote serviceability. So, um, this is particularly important when installers are having to go out on site, potentially upgrade firmware, these sorts of things. Uh, we've got the ability to do that remotely as long as they're connecting to it, uh, connected to our monitoring portal, which is called SENS. Uh, they've also got the ability to adjust parameters and firmware, etc., via the front screen of the inverter. Uh, but as I said, if they really didn't want to do that, didn't want to go out to site, they can give us the serial number and we can have that updated from our headquarters. Uh, next is the inbuilt DC isolator. So up until now, none of our inverters had an inbuilt DC isolator. Uh, we've just released a hybrid ready inverter, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later, that has an inbuilt DC isolator. We've had our residential product approved uh, with a DC isolator now, and every new product we'll bring into the market will have an inbuilt DC isolator. And I suppose what we're just trying to do is we're trying to just build more value into our inverters. So any chance we can get, we're trying to make the inverters more uh, valuable, more flexible, and rather than just uh, always getting drawn into a, you know, a race to the bottom in terms of price, our strategy is to try and hold our price where it is, but just put, build more value into the inverters. <laughs> and then lastly, the warranty. So up until I think April or May last year, we only had five year warranties for all of our inverters. Our DNS product now has a five plus five. The new MS large single phase product has a five plus five, and uh, we'll start rolling that out with all of the new products as well. We're even looking at potentially offering the full year standard warranty for our commercial range, um, but, but we'll see how they go. When you said five plus five, what do you mean? So five, five years, uh, you can't call it a 10 year warranty because it's five years full warranty. The first five years, which covers your parts and also covers your labor. And then for the second five years, years six to 10, we cover the parts in terms of if the inverter fails, we replace the inverter, but we just don't cover that um, labor component. What do you say about the commercial warranty? The commercial warranty. So with the commercial products at the moment, it's still five year warranty, but we're looking to extend that and hopefully by the end of the year, we can roll out a full 10 year standard warranty on the commercial range as opposed to five plus five. Um, the next slide here just, I suppose, highlights uh, the flex flexibility of our products. But not only that, I suppose a lot of the time as a Chinese inverter manufacturer, people think that if you are selling your product for say 30 or 40% less than, you, than some of your competitors, um, that you're either compromising on reliability or you're compromising on functionality. Um, and in most of the time, most cases, it's not actually the case. We know that we've got as much uh, flexibility in our products as anyone. Um, 
We're, we've certainly got the largest range of uh, resi inverters on the market now with the new MS. We've definitely got the largest range of um, storage inverters on the market. Um, in terms of flexibility, as I said, we're building DC isolators into the inverter. The volt bar and volt watt um, solution that we have, we think is better than any on the market at the moment, and we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, so we know we've got the flexibility, and in terms of reliability, the product, as I said, is, is very reliable, and so we believe, as a Chinese inverter manufacturer, we've got the ability to build more functionality into the inverter at a cheaper cost, and that's simply because the labor component in China is cheaper. This is just an overview of our storage inverters. So uh, over on the left-hand side, we've got our ES and our EM products, and this is a single phase uh, hybrid inverter, low voltage. So we've got that in two versions. One of them is a 50 amp version, the other one's 100 amp, and that's the ES and the EM, and they've been in the market now for quite a few years. We've then got our SVP product, which is an AC coupled retrofit solution. And where we really promote this product is if someone's got an existing installation on their wall and they want to add batteries, then you just simply add an SVP product and then you can add the batteries. And that also means that you're not liable for that existing installation if, for example, it was done by another installer. We've then got a new product, which is our first, what we call hybrid ready. The reason we call this hybrid ready is because uh, we've got the ability to sell this in two different ways. It's a single phase high voltage hybrid inverter, our first high voltage single phase. Um, we can sell this to our distributors as a full hybrid to start with, which has a certain price point, or we can sell it as a hybrid ready. When we sell it as a hybrid ready, um, it's, it's effectively only 15% more expensive than a normal, our normal 5 kilowatt string inverter. However, the difference is that if the customer eventually wants to add batteries later, that customer just simply calls us up, buys an activation code, and we remotely update their software. So the idea of this product is that we understand a lot of people want to add batteries, but when they find out the cost of the batteries, some people are turned away, and they think, look, I'll wait six months or 12 months, the cost of batteries becomes a bit cheaper. And that way, what we can do is sell them a product, and when they want to add batteries, they're not having to uh, buy a different inverter, and they're not paying for it at the start as well. They're literally only paying for it when they want to add that. So as I said, if you buy it up front, uh, you can buy it as a full hybrid inverter, or you can basically buy it as a string inverter with activation via software later. We've then got a, a BH model, which is very similar to the SVP, AC coupled retrofit. The only difference there is this one's high voltage and the SVP's low voltage. So this is, the, this is the only product here that we don't currently have in the market. We'll release that in a couple of months. Uh, and the EH was released into the market a couple of months ago. Um, the other high voltage product we've got, so the, the EH is high voltage and the ET is high voltage. Um, and obviously the BH is high voltage, ESEM, SVP, low voltage. The ET is our three phase hybrid product. So this comes in a five kilowatt and also a 10 kilowatt model and all of our storage products are compatible with BYD, LG Chem, Alpha, and Pylon 10. Or at least they will be, so. Yeah. The, oh, the voltage, yeah. Uh, and we've broken it down into uh, six or seven key selling points here for our energy storage solutions. Um, the first one is that what we're trying to do with our energy storage solutions is provide a solution for uh, any possible situation. And that's why we've got so many of these different products. Um, and as I said, definitely the largest range of storage products on the market. The only product effectively we don't really have at the moment um, is a fully off-grid product. So all of our storage products we promote as grid tied storage. We've got a fully off-grid product in development, uh, but it's not here yet. The other one I didn't speak about that we will release later this year is a commercial storage product. So we'll have uh, a 30 kilowatt, 50, 100, 150 and 200 kilowatt storage product coming out to the market as well. <coughs> Next is our backup functionality. So a lot of manufacturers or nearly all the manufacturers have emergency power supplies, so EPS, um, whereas we've got UPS. So when the grid cuts out, our backup has to kick in within eight milliseconds uh, as opposed to five seconds. And it doesn't seem like a, a huge difference, 
but generally that's the difference between your appliances, what you're sending and not what you're sending. Uh, next we've got, uh, with all of our single phase storage, you need a single phase meter and you need a CT. And then with our three phase storage, you need uh, a three phase meter and three CTs. So we provide that in the inverter box for you. It's no additional charge, but we provide it there for you. And, uh, and the reason we do that is because we're, um, as I said, our strategy is we're trying to just make it easier for the installers. And we think that if we make it easier for the installers, the retailers, then they're gonna to wanna to use our product more. And that's, that's simply the reason behind that. And then in terms of our backup, all of our storage products have got inbuilt backup. So you're not having to buy an additional device to achieve that backup. And then the last big uh, selling point there is our charge and discharge current. So especially with the ES and the EM hybrids, we've got a 100 amp charge and discharge, which, uh, which effectively is more than most of our competitors that are sitting somewhere around the 65 amp mark. Um, I'll quickly go through the new products. We've touched on them a little bit. Uh, first of all is the XS model. So this is gonna be a single phase, single MPVT that'll replace the um, NS version. That'll come in a 1.5 to 2, 2.5 to 3 kilowatt. Uh, it will be the world's smallest string inverter. It's the same size as an A4 piece of paper. And that we're now seeing the design and the technology of in inverters really take leaps forward, especially uh, with how small they can get. It's more efficient than the previous model we've got. It's also got more cost efficiencies because it's smaller again. And, um, and even lower startup voltages. So I think the startup voltage is 50 volts, therefore it starts working earlier in the day and then you're gonna be generating for longer. The next one we spoke about a little bit before, it's the large single phase, and that will be coming out in a five kilowatt, six, seven, 8.5, nine and 10. That'll have three MPPTs. Up until now, our largest single phase inverter has been five kilowatts. We know that the average size system now in Australia is above seven kilowatts. So effectively, there was a really large part of that market that we weren't able to capture. Yeah. And we think that this product will certainly be able to do that. And no, we know that a couple of our no, competitors have got eight kilowatts in the market. No, um, however, no, uh, no one, as we know, has got a three MPT eight kilowatt at the moment. And that'll also have, as I said, five plus five warranty inbuilt DC isolator as well. Next one is the SMT inverter. This is the 3 MPPT commercial product. We've also got it on display at the back, and that comes in the 25, 29.99, and 36 kilowatt bottles. Uh, this is a really important product for us, especially because it closes the gap a little bit between, currently we had a 20 and a 25 kilowatt product, and then you jump to 50 and 60. This closes that gap, but not only that, it adds a lot, a lot more flexibility and functionality um, into our portfolio that we can currently have there. It's also got a really large uh, maximum DC input voltage. So if you compare it against any of the commercial products on the market at the moment, you'll notice that you can install more panels per string, uh, which is just, make, again, making it easier for installers. The MT series, I touched on this a bit before, it's the 4 MPB Tracker, 80 kilowatt product from the same family as our 50 and our 60. Uh, Again, later on we'll release a hundred and, and larger models, but right now this is the largest product we bring out. Yes. And this is one of the products we've got 50% oversized and capability on. Uh, and then the EH, spoke about this before, this is the hybrid ready product that, as I said, you can buy this as a string inverter. It's really cost effective. You can upgrade it to a hybrid later if you want, or you can buy it as a full hybrid to start with. And again, with all of our storage inverters, the meters, the CTs that provided with it, inbuilt backup functionality. Uh, this is our BH. So this is the single phase AC couple retrofit. Uh, the difference between this and the SVP is this one's the high voltage as opposed to the low voltage in the market. And I suppose we've, we've already had a, a large portfolio with low voltage products. We're now releasing more uh, high voltage products. Feedback that we're getting at the moment is that it, it's probably nearly a 50-50 split between the two. Moving forward, we probably do think high voltage is gonna start taking a little bit more market share moving forward. Uh, and as a result, as an inverter manufacturer, um, we can actually manufacture the high voltage storage products cheaper than we can man uh, manufacture low voltage products. However, generally speaking, the batteries of the high voltage are generally a little bit more expensive than the low voltage. Excuse me, can you get back
Um, we touched on before about our monitoring portal and how we've got the ability to do remote serviceability. So the SEMS monitoring portal, our smart energy management system is available on the web version. It's also available via the app as well. And, um, and this is basically what you'll see if you're a customer. So we've tried to make it consumer friendly. It gives you the basic information. You can see the generation, the income, uh, the weather report, all that sort of stuff. We actually modified it a little bit. We found out that 12, 18 months ago, we probably had too much information there. Sometimes it can confuse the consumers. So we've, we've really dumbed it down, I suppose. And uh, it's really consumer friendly. However, if the installer does want more information, you can go onto our web version and the installer can see things like voltage current, string currents, um, temperatures, all that sort of stuff that the consumer really doesn't want to see. Um, export control. So, uh, in short, we can achieve export control with every single one of our products. We were talking a bit before about trying to add flexibility into our products. For our single phase models, you don't need an additional meter. All you need is a CT with our products because we've got the inbuilt export control functionality in the inverter. You just need an additional CT to go with that. Most of the other manufacturers out there, you need a, a meter, it might cost you $200, some of them it cost you $300. But for our single phase, it's just simply a CT. For our three phase, you need to purchase a GM 3000 meter. Uh, this also has integrated CTs into it. And then for our large commercial, you need to purchase our SEC 1000. Or if you've got multiple inverters, you need the SEC 1000. The SEC 1000 also has built-in load consumption monitoring as well. If you want to achieve load consumption monitoring for our single phase product, you can. You need to purchase the home kit. Uh, the home kit is compatible with any solar system. It'll give you 24 hours of load consumption monitoring uh, and effectively it's a four pole meter. If you want load consumption monitoring for our small three phase products, um, we, don't, we don't have the home kit 3000 available yet. In the next couple of months, we, we will. As I said before, you can use the SEC 1000 for those uh, small three phase. Um, but it's more for large commercial. So for that small three phase range, uh, give us a couple of months and we'll have a solution out to the market. So Volt Bar and Volt Watt, um, as I said before, we think we've got the best solution for, for it at the moment. The reason is because all of the inverter manufacturers have to have this uh, feature inside their inverter. We have to be able to provide the installer the ability to adjust these parameters on site and what we've done, instead of the installer going on site, plugging in a laptop and an ethernet cable, or alternatively using the app on their phone to manually program in these settings, what we've done is we've loaded all of these settings into the inverter as uh, basically as country codes. So when you're selecting the country code, let's say you're in WA, you go down and you click AUWAPN, -A you click that button, and then all your volt bar, volt watt settings for AUWAPN is already set. In Victoria, we're lucky that all of the DNSPs have got the same requirement, so that's very easy. Uh, and in New South Wales, you just simply go down, click your uh, click your DN relevant DNSP, and once you click that, the volt bar and volt watt is automatically set for you. So we've tried to make it really easy. Again, the reason we've done that is because we think that if we make it easy for the installers, hopefully they're going to want to use our product more than our competitors. And um, and, and, and I suppose it was a lot of work at first because when the standard came out, we had a lot of product in the country and we basically sent our guys out to uh, up, upgrade all of the firmware of any product that was in the country. Uh, it's easy for us now because everything um, gets set in China, factory set, and uh, every time a new DNSP brings out a new standard, we feed that information back to China and they load it in the inverters before it comes to Australia. Uh, in terms of quality control, all of our inverters go through a seven-stage uh, testing process. Uh, first of all, all the components get tested individually before they go into the inverters. The inverters then go through their testing process. I suppose a couple of the more important testing uh, uh, stations they go through. One of them is the climate chamber testing. So we test the inverter at 60 degrees Celsius. We also test the inverter at minus 30 degrees Celsius and we warrant the product at minus 25 and also 60 degrees Celsius. Our support in Australia. So in the case of you do have a faulty inverter, um, I suppose the first steps are that you call our hotline, they'll lodge the case for you. 
we've got three levels of service support. The first level is our national service agent. They cover, I suppose, nearly all the metropolitan areas in Australia and up to a couple of hundred kilometres between that. Uh, we've also got our level two support, which is 40 to 50 installers we've got in the regional and rural areas of Australia. And they've signed contracts with Goodwin. And if, uh, and if any uh, inverters go faulty throughout there, we can, send, we can send the jobs to them. They'll go out and do it for us. However, we are flexible. So if, if you as a retailer or installer want to do your own service work, we, can, we certainly allow for that as well. So you've just got to make sure that you let us know. Uh, we can even sign you up as a service partner if that's it as well. And then, and then just lastly, we've got our uh, third level of service and support, which is our own service engineers from Goodweek. So we've got the ability to send these guys out to site as well. But most commonly I use, uh, I use my team of service engineers to, to go out on site, give customers a hand commissioning, especially if they're commissioning one of our products for the first time, whether it's storage, residential or commercial, it doesn't matter. Uh, let us know if you want a hand, we're happy to send our guys out to site. Uh, we're happy to do as many trainings as possible. Uh, and the other thing is, so if an inverter does fail within the first 12 months, we provide a brand new unit to the customer. Um, all of the faulty units um, in Australia go back to China. The reason we send them back there for repair is because we can control the quality a lot better. We know what the quality is going to be like. Uh, potentially the disadvantage of doing that is that you can potentially run out of service with full stock in Australia, which can then mean there's long lead times for customers. So what we do in that case is we guarantee if we don't have any of that bottle in stock, we'll send out a brand new unit as well. So, so quite often we actually do just send out brand new units for the customers, even if it has been two, three or four years. You said, you said earlier that all the, all the uh, quality data comes through you, but presumably there's a, quite a large database. What's the overall historical reliability figure? So the, the, I mean, we, we do actively state what our failure rate is in Australia. Um, we were quoting 0.6% failure rate. Uh, I think it was about three or four weeks ago. Uh, Mike sent me the latest data and also trying to let me know that it's now 0.39%. And, um, and as I said, on a, on a weekly basis, also a monthly basis, Mike sends me the, the report through. We see exactly what each failure rate is. Um, we also see every call that comes through our call center as well. We've got one gentleman who looks after Wi-Fi and communications calls. We've got another gentleman who looks after string inverter queries. Mike takes the storage calls. And, uh, and anything sales related comes through to myself. So we see how many calls um, come through every week. We see how many were answered, potentially how many were not. And, um, and so we've got really strong targets and objectives for service and support in Australia. Our aim is certainly to try and be the best uh, manufacturer of inverters in terms of service and support. We know that service correlates to sales, so that's what we're really trying to do. And it's all, it's all for me. Do we have any questions? We've got a few minutes for questions before we have a little break. Anyone? No questions? It was pretty comprehensive. Very good. 